In Activity 3, Collecting Weather Data, students explore how to forecast the weather. Students first collect temperature, rainfall, and wind data, then discover how data collection aids in forecasting. Students then add daily weather data to the weather stations. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 2, Activity Sheet 3, compasses, Celsius thermometers, rain gauge, and weather stations. You will also need to provide current weather reports. To prepare for Session 1, make two copies of Activity Sheet 3 for each student. Collect weather reports, one per team. If at all possible, conduct this activity just before rain is expected. Select a time of day and an area outside where students can position the rain gauge and collect weather data during the continuing observation sessions. Try to conduct the sessions at the same time each day. If it is raining or snowing, select an alternate outdoor site that is sheltered for making weather observations. To begin Session 1, remind students which weather conditions are considered when making a weather forecast. Temperature, rainfall, wind speed and direction, barometric pressure, and other general observations. Explain that in this activity, students will collect three types of weather data, temperature, amount of rainfall, and wind speed and direction. Hold up a thermometer for the class to see. Students should know that a thermometer is a liquid-filled glass tube used to read the temperature. Temperature is commonly measured according to the Celsius and Fahrenheit scales. Students will measure and record temperatures in degrees Celsius. Ask students, how can the thermometer help us forecast the weather? Students should respond that a drop in temperature often indicates a storm. Next, define precipitation for students as any solid or liquid form of water that falls from the sky. If the temperature is above zero degrees Celsius, the freezing point for water, only rain can fall. If the temperature in clouds is below zero degrees Celsius, a storm may bring snow, sleet, or hail. Hold up the rain gauge for the class to see. A rain gauge collects rain that falls in one particular spot and is used as an indicator of how much rain has fallen in the general area. Ask students for ideas as to where they think the rain gauge should be positioned. Encourage answers that indicate that the student is thinking about accurate rainfall amounts, not amounts that are greater due to runoff from roofs or lesser because of protection from trees and overhangs. If a student suggests measuring the depth of puddles, remind him or her that much of the water in a puddle is runoff and not a true indicator of amount of rainfall. Ask students, how can a rain gauge help us to forecast the weather? By recording how much rain falls during a storm, you can later refer to those records when a similar storm is developing and predict the amount of rain that may fall. Now ask, how can knowing wind speed and direction help us forecast the weather? Storms are usually preceded by a change in wind speed. Knowing the wind speed also tells us how strong a storm will be. Knowing where the wind is coming from allows us to determine in which direction it is moving. Measuring these changes allows us to predict the approach of another storm when similar changes occur. Distribute a copy of Activity Sheet 3 to each student. Point out the Beaufort scale on their activity sheet. Explain that they can infer the speed of the wind by comparing the conditions they see with the descriptions on the Beaufort scale. Hold up a compass and inform students that this instrument is a compass and that they will use it to determine wind direction. To demonstrate how to use the compass, hold it level in your hand or lay it on a flat surface such as a tabletop. The surface must be non-metallic. When the compass needle stops moving, the tip is pointing to the north pole of the Earth. Rotate the compass case so that the end is under the colored compass needle. Distribute a compass and a thermometer to each team. Retrieve the rain gauge from the kit. Have students get Activity Sheet 2 from their weather stations and take it, as well as Activity Sheet 3, with them when they go outside. 
take the students to your predetermined shady location outside. Temperature must be taken in a shady location because sunlight can give a false high reading. Have the students determine the best position for the rain gauge and place it in the ground. Using their tools, have students measure the temperature, then the speed and direction of the wind. Have the students record their data and general observations on Activity Sheet 2. After all teams have finished recording their data, return to the classroom. To prepare for Session 2, each student will need his or her copy of Activity Sheet 2. Each team of two will need a thermometer, compass, and their weather station. The class will need access to the rain gauge. To begin Session 2, have students retrieve their weather stations and transfer the data they collected to the Daily Weather and Observation section on their stations. Remind them to record the day's date. Guide students to use the weather report to add barometric pressure data, if available. After the data has been entered, have students secure their latest weather report on top of the previous weather reports on their weather stations. Compare and contrast the weather forecast from yesterday with the actual data that students collected and ask, how did yesterday's forecast compare with the actual data that you collected today? Answers will vary. Have students observe and record on Activity Sheet 2 the temperature, the amount of rainfall, and the wind direction and speed every day for the next eight days. Students should transfer the data to the daily weather and observations chart on their station. Remind each team to bring to class a weather report for the next activity. To conclude session two, have students return their thermometers and compasses to the kit and return the weather stations along with activity sheets two and three to the designated areas. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM Teacher's Guide.